Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cromel School. I know that many nail techs struggle with a manicure on short nails. The material gets on the skin, it gets messy, there are often liftings on the free edge. Sounds familiar? Then give a thumbs up. You can make such nails beautiful and they will last long. In this video, I will show you the secret of a perfect gel polish wearability without any chips. Let's get into it. Today I have such short nails for the manicure. Gel polish coating often does not hold on and cracks quickly on such nails. I will show you how to avoid this and make the coating last until the next correction. My model does not want to have a nail extension and extended length. She's not allowed to have long nails at work, so we're going to do the manicure and the coating on what we have now. As usual, I check the condition of the nails and the cuticle before I start. I can see a lot of cuts from the previous manicure. They are like lines on the tree, indicating how many times my model got her nails done. So today, I need to work carefully to avoid any extra cuts. First, we lift up the cuticle with a pusher, opening the pocket well. The pusher is always placed at an angle of 30 degrees to prevent digging into layers of the nail plate. I clean out the pterygium which is under the cuticle and on the nail plate, using the rectangular side of the pusher. I make round moves in the sinuses to prevent accidental injuries. This way we remove some pterygium and we'll have to work less with the knee file and there is a little chance to cut through the nail plate. Don't skip this step. To do the manicure easier, especially if you are a beginner. On the thumb, we have a wide lunula, which means that there is no deep pocket under the cuticle. And the nail is very soft and spongy in the root zone, so I need to be extremely careful. I carefully lift up the cuticle with an orange stick. Since my model has such a rubber type of cuticle, I'm going to do a combined manicure. I'm using a flame diamond drill bit to lift up the cuticle and clean out the pterygium. My model's nails aren't very arched, so I took an 0.23 drill bit. If the nails were more arched, I would take an 0.21 one. Forward position, the speed is 15 to 17,000 RPM. I'm working from right to left with short strokes. There is very dry skin in the left sinus on the thumb. That's why I press the bit more to the skin rather than to the nail plate in order to polish everything completely. Done with one side and switching the rotation direction to reverse, I process the right side at the same speed of 15 to 17,000 RPM. At each stage, I pull the cuticle very well to see the area that I'm working on. The distal nail fault often protrudes under the short nails, so it often gets rough, that's why we polish it too. So the manicure isn't just about the cuticle, but also about the skin around the nails. After lifting up the cuticle, I'm going to buff the nail plate first and only then make a cut, to keep my perfect manicure from fluffing. I remove some tiny skin particles by buffing under the cuticle with the soft side of the nail buffer, polishing the cuticle so it's easier to cut it. Now the pocket under the cuticle is clean and ready for the cut. For cutting the cuticle, I'm going to use stalic scissors. I put my ring finger into the lower ring, the thumb into the upper ring, the middle finger under the scissors and the index on the stud. This is how you should hold scissors. And you can hold your scissors like this if you want to cut some small hangnails. But look what's happening to your wrist. It bends a lot and it can hurt while you are working. I put the lower blade under the cuticle hiding it there. Scissors should be placed perpendicularly and don't fall on your client. I cut the cuticle in small pieces of 2 to 3 mm. I'm trying to make a single cut so that the hangnails don't appear. I turn the nail toward the cut. I lift the tips of the blades upwards when I want to finish it. And we've got a single cut. Now we can refine small hangnails by changing the grip, as I've shown before. 
You may have seen in my videos that I often work with tweezer scissors. I love using them. But actually, if a nail technician knows how to work with tools, it doesn't matter what tool to use. Nippers, scissors or tweezer scissors. The result should turn out great. Make sure to remove the dust very well with a brush before cutting, so that your tool doesn't get dull. If the scissors don't go any further during the cutting process, stop and go back to the previous stage. Perhaps you have not processed the cuticle well with a knee file. Shave the free edge after the cut. Here we have a very short free edge, so let's do a squabble, since it's a universal shape that suits most of the nail types. My model has got wide nails, and it will be nice to extend them, but we can't do it. Usually, I shape the nails after cutting the cuticle, since then we can see the entire length of the nail blade. After that, I buff under the nail to clean up the leftovers. Now polish small hangnails and dry skin. Forward position. The speed is 10,000 RPM. I remove the dust and degrease the nail plate. We're done with the manicure stage. Now it's important to choose the right base cut for this nail plate type. We always need to choose the right base according to the client's nail plate type. Since these nails are not long, I will take a liquid base or a medium consistency one in order to spread it faster. Also, it doesn't give too much volume and forms the correct architecture quickly. But before applying the base, I want to show you a method of sealing the nail plate to avoid any peelings on the free edge. To do this, I will need a high viscosity gel, a hard one for sculpting. I apply an acid-free primer all over the nail plate. I grab a small amount of the material pulling it out like a string. I apply it on the free edge and pull it out to the tip of the nail. Use a thick consistency gel so that it doesn't leak anywhere. And send to cure for 30 seconds. Then apply it on the rest of the nails and cure well. This way the free edge gets sealed with the gel and there is a little chance of peeling at the end. I try to work without touching the nail and the skin, but the material won't hold on the skin anyway, so we can easily separate the gel and file the free edge. The gel should be hard, so it could prevent the free edge from bending. I pull a bit of the material, literally 1 mm. We don't need to extend the lens. After curing, I carefully separate the material from the skin with an orange stick. I shape the form and remove all the bumps from the surface. Remove the dust and degrease. Let's take a closer look at the sealed part. A thin, almost invisible and non-lengthening layer. Apply the base cut. First, moisturize the nail plate in three moves. The clear gel is more visible after applying the base. Now grab a small drop of the base cut to form the architecture. Since this base is liquid, it quickly aligns by itself. I'm using a thin brush. Make sure to work quickly, so that it doesn't leak on the sides. Otherwise, the nails will turn out thick and wide from the top. So I turn the client's hand upside down and correct the architecture with a thin brush. Check the highlight, since it indicates if the surface is smooth. Now quickly send to cure in the lamp. Many nail techs struggle with sealing the free edge if it is protruding. Usually, I pull the front nail fold with my middle or pinky finger while applying the material and carefully paint along the tip. I hold it like this until I place the hand into the lamp. If you use thicker base cuts, the nails will look too bulky. And if you apply too much material, it won't look pretty. So I recommend you to have several types of base cuts different in plasticity and consistency. Working with liquid bases, you need to be extremely careful and quick 
so that there are no leaks, since later they will cause liftings. When I turn the nail, I lift it up, so the material could flow closer to the cuticle. I apply more base coat on the thumb. If you can't work quickly with this consistency, you can divide this process into two steps. Apply the first thin layer and fill in all the flaws. They are mostly on the thumb. Then cure. Now apply a thin aligning layer. I'm applying it like this since there is a bump in the center. I check the highlight and, if it's even, I send the nails to cure for 30 seconds. Now moving on to the color coating. And the most difficult thing with short nails is to paint carefully without any licks, because they will mess up the entire look. What's more, if the material gets on the skin, it can cause an allergic reaction. Stay tuned for the updates on my channel, soon there will be a video about allergies. First, I push the cuticle with an orange stick to apply the color as close as possible. There will be a slider on the ring finger, so I apply a camouflage gel polish under it. Cure in a lamp. I will stick the slider design on the tacky layer of color. I cut out the image, put it on a wet tissue and wait for the paper to get soaked. Then I transfer the slider to the nail plate and smooth it out with a silicone brush to get rid of the bubbles. We need to match the main color to the slider to create a beautiful combination. Now pull back the cuticle, chill the finger down and paint. At this stage, nail techs often seal the free edge, fan in the brush like this, and it gets on the nail fault. The techs start fixing this with their fingers in the gloves. And it all gets smeared all over the skin. So please never do it. You need to remove the color completely and apply it once again. Now I will show you a few tips on how to apply it. I paint the nail plate the same way and here I don't paint the sides of the nail. So it does not seem too wide. You can remove all the licks at the free edge with a thin brush. You can also use this brush to seal the free edge if you want to. Or you can fan the brush like this and paint along the free edge. This way you won't get on the front nail fault and it will be clean. The main point while aligning the material is not to lower down the brush, hold it parallel to the nail plate. Then it won't get on the skin. By the way, when nail tacks seal the free edge like this, the material gets under the nail plate and peels off while your client is wearing this coating. I pull the cuticle. There is no need to paint the second layer so deeply as the first one because it will flow there itself over the first layer. I open up the sinuses. If you don't paint this area, the nails will look trapezoidal. Now paint the free edge. I turn the brush and grab some more color for density. Make long moves from the cuticle to the free edge. The brush is parallel to the nail plate. I don't lower it down. You can fix the coating with a thin brush. Apply top coat with aligning moves, especially on the slider so the top doesn't crack. Did you like the transformation? Then give a thumbs up. Work carefully and make your clients happy. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss out on my new videos. Success in your work! Bye-bye!